I got some new markers at a garage sale. Look at all the pretty colors. We're not going to use them now. I'll ask one of my servants to pick that up later. My lesson continues from the fact that 2 times pi squared times the mass of the electron times Coulomb's constant squared times the fundamental charge to the fourth power divided by h squared is 13.6 electron volts. It's some number of joules also, which you probably should know, but it's a much handier number of electron volts, and I like to remember 13.6 electron volts. So, if you'll recall, I'm like, if this doesn't make any sense to you, you better whack, whack, you better back up and watch video two in Bohr's analysis of the atom. So then, we go to the full expression for the energy of the nth state of an electron. And remember, these are quantum jumping acceptable states. They're his magic orbits. And this is negative 13.6 electron volts times z square over n square. And as we get to higher and higher energy levels, oh dang, this is, well, n is an integer, and n equals 1 is one of the possible states, but then you go to n equals 2, and it's one fourth as big, but it's negative. So it's one fourth as negative. And then we'd go to one ninth as negative, and then, dang, one sixteenth as negative. So these are very, very interesting. I'll put it down here. N is an element of the natural numbers. And I'm going to draw you an atom's energy levels. Here we go. Let's do them in brown. First of all, there's the lowest energy level, and this is negative 13.6 electron volts. And this is for actually hydrogen because I'm putting in z equals 1 right here. And so this is called the ground state because it's the lowest. It's where the electron prefers to hang out. Remember, we can only have one electron. And, um, oh, I guess there's, um, there's a zero level here. Maybe you should call that the ground and this should be called the whole state. But no, this is, this is zero energy. Zero electron volts right here. And up here, we'll have to do this in seafoam green because it's so happy, up here is freedom. Remember we talked about getting your uncle out of jail? That's getting your uncle out of jail. If you can get an electron to get out, well, let's have a little quiz. All right. <clears throat> quiz. What wavelength light can free an electron from hydrogen. You know how to do this? Let me give you a little bit of framework for this. I'm saying that freedom is here at zero electron volts, and the electrons sitting in the atom have negative 13.6 electron volts. So how much energy do we need to give them to freedom? I guess we need to give them 13.6 electron volts. If we give them more energy than that, then they'll be free, and they'll be booking it out of there. But if we give them exactly that much energy, then they will be free. So I need you to find the wavelength of light that corresponds to 13.6 electron volts. And guess what? That's going to be awesome. You go ahead and find that. It's probably a lot of energy. Uh, hydrogen has a very, very nice, healthy, low ground state. But let's figure out that wavelength. And I will pause it and ask you to get back to me in a moment. I hope that you have found that answer. Ding! Now, there are other, there are other states of this possible electron. This electron could be here on the ground state, and I guess if it were, you'd probably draw a little electron sitting there. I'm an electron. And it doesn't matter where you put it left or right, it's just in that ground state right here. And then I could draw you another state. Let's keep it in brown. Another state, the next state, well, look at this equation right here. This says it goes like n squared. So this is n equals 1 right here. n equals 2 is going to be this number divided by 4. So it's going to be way up here, 1 fourth down from the zero level. This is n equals 2. And it's actually negative 13, sorry, that equal sign does not apply, negative 13.6 electron volts divided by 4. This is what I might call the first excited state. Let's put that in orange and be a little bit more clear. The first excited 
state. This is another stable place that the electron could hang out, but it's not the minimum energy. So unless it had some good reason, it would drop back down to there. And we would show a transition. Ooh, how can we do a transition? Green? We could show a transition as it drops back down, it would go like that. Now, it's lowering its energy as it drops down from the first excited state to the ground state. And it's lowering its energy by the difference between here. That delta E is how its energy is lowering. How would it get from here to here? Well, it could gain the energy like that. That's also a possibility. This is, um, <clears throat> let's see, getting hit. Getting hit with a photon. That's one way to get up there. And the way to get down is release a photon. Release a photon. So you might have either one of those happening at any given moment. And also, well, let's just draw some more of these. We have to uh, go to n equals 3. n equals 3 is going to be this stuff divided by 9. And remember, I'm keeping, uh, keeping it so that we have uh, z equals 1. So I need 1 ninth here. I'm thinking that that's probably where n equals 3 is going to be. The problem is this n thing, n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it goes to infinity. Wow. Wow. Um, okay. This level right here, let me label that guy really carefully. That level right there is negative 13.6 electron volts divided by 9. Then I need to divide by 16, so that's probably going to be something like right here. This is n equals 4. And then I need to divide by 25. And that's probably right there. And then I need to divide by 36. That's probably here. And then I divide by 49. That's probably there. Yeah, so somehow in between here and here, I have an infinite number of states. They're not very different from one another. The energy difference is extremely small, but there are an infinite number of stable states in here because my n can go to infinity. But the difference between them and freedom is so pathetically small that they become less and less important. So I've only drawn two transitions here. Let's see if we could draw another transition. You could also go between two and three. You could go like this. Would that be letting off a photon or um, a gaining a photon? You figure that out. And then we could go back up that direction. That's a possible transition as well. And then we could, uh, we could get some blue transitions here. You could go in between here and there, and you could go in between there and there. I'm about to turn the page. Get ready. I want to make an interesting statement. Bohr's model finally makes a prediction. Bohr's prediction is this. The energy levels that required in order to make a transition in an electron or the energy that's released from a natural transition is this. The change in energy must be the energy final minus the energy initial. And I've got equations for both of these suckers right here. It turns out that it is, uh-oh, get ready for it, 2 times pi squared times the mass of the electron times kc squared times e squared divided by h squared times z squared over n final squared minus <laughs> the other term, 2 pi squared mass of the electron kc squared. Is mass of the electron supposed to be squared? No, it's not. Check this out. E to the, whoa, that's supposed to be the fourth. Brown, the fourth. Fix that in your notes. And then this guy's supposed to come over here and divide by h squared. And then I'm supposed to have z squared over here and an initial squared over there. Wow, I'm taking the final and subtracting the initial. But I can factor out everything over here. I get 2 times pi squared times the mass of the electron times kc squared times the fundamental charge to the fourth power divided by h squared. What do you think? Should I put a z in there too? No, I'm just going to say for hydrogen. For hydrogen, z equals 1. And so I'm going to continue this for hydrogen. And then I'm going to have to subtract. Oh, no, I'm going to factor out this business right here. Factoring out this term and that term. And I get 1 over n final score minus 1 over n initial score. Oh, my gosh. This is Balmer. And Bohr's prediction is that this stuff gives you Rydberg's constant. Does this remind you of Kepler? 
totally reminds me of Kepler versus Newton. Rigberg's constant is this stuff right here. Aren't we supposed to have a C? Where the heck's the H and the C and everything? Oh, wait, I was supposed to, this is in terms of energy. We're almost to Rydberg constant. Not yet, not yet, jumping the gun. But the change in energy is going to be a photon. So it's HC over lambda. And if I do a little bit of math right here, what am I supposed to do? The change in energy is HC over lambda. So then I can say one over lambda is 2 pi squared. I'm still going to get that. I'm still going to get the mass of the electron. Oh, it's so crowded. Let's scoot up a little bit. I'm going to say 1 over lambda is 2 times pi squared times the mass of the electron times the Coulomb's constant squared times the charge to the fourth divided by, now how many H's do I have down in the denominator? I'm flipping this sucker over. I'm going to get three H's in the denominator, H to the third, oh, and also a C in the denominator. And then I multiply by this interesting difference of ratios of squares. Here we go, N final square minus one over N initial square. So we say, here's Balmer. We say that going from one transition to another is allowed and anything else is not allowed. And that's why we have lines in the spectrum of hydrogen. And it's completely correct for hydrogen. Absolutely perfect for hydrogen. Look at this. This is the Rydberg constant. You type that stuff into your calculator, you get 1.097 times 10 to the seventh inverse meters. Try it out. This is awesome. Let's see where science can go from Bohr because Bohr is making some concessions. He's saying some things are magically okay and other things are not okay. But the meaning behind that is completely unclear in 19 freaking 13. Here we are in 2013. Does it make more sense? I don't know. You make the call.